tonight with just over a month to go until Election Day, the first and only meeting between the two men who hope to become vice president of the United States, Democratic Governor Tim Walz of Minnesota and Republican Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. Now, this is likely the final debate of this election cycle and voting is already underway in 20 states. CBS News polling shows this remains a race either presidential candidate could win. The CBS News vice presidential debate starts now. Fight for every single vote, and we're going to take this country back. And we are ready to continue to build the future together. We're going to turn this whole country red with President Donald J. Trump's leadership. You know, it's at the end of this little journey. Kamala Harris is the next president of the United States. This is a CBS News special, live from CBS News headquarters in New York. America decides the vice presidential debate. Good evening, I'm Nora O'Donnell, and thank you for joining us for tonight's CBS News vice presidential debate. We want to welcome our viewers on CBS, on other networks here in the U.S. and around the world. We have a consequential night ahead, and our focus is the issues that matter to you, the voter. Let's introduce the candidates. Minnesota's Democratic Governor Tim Walz and Ohio's Republican Senator J.D. Vance tonight meeting for the first time. I'm Margaret Brennan. In order to have a thoughtful and <laughs> civil the debate, has. these are the rules that both campaigns have agreed to. Questions will be directed at one candidate who will have two minutes to respond. The other candidate will be allowed two minutes for rebuttal. Then each candidate will get another minute to make further points, with an additional one minute each at the discretion of the moderator. The primary role of the moderators is to facilitate the debate between the candidates, enforce the rules, and provide the candidates with the opportunity to fact check claims made by each other. CBS News reserves the right to mute the candidates' microphones to maintain decorum. We have not shared the questions or topics with the campaigns. The stage is set. Governor, Senator, thank you for joining us. Let's get started. <clears throat> so, Pretty much sounds exactly the same setup as the last presidential debate. Let's see how the VPs manage this allotted time. So, yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for this. Let's Tonight, our country is facing several unfolding crises. The Middle East is on the brink of war. Americans are suffering from the catastrophic impact of Hurricane Helene, and now a labor strike as 25,000 dock workers from Maine to Texas are picketing. We're going to begin tonight with the Middle East. Margaret. Thank you, Nora. Earlier today, Iran launched its largest attack yet on Israel, but that attack failed thanks to joint U.S. and Israeli defensive action. President Biden has deployed more than 40,000 U.S. military personnel and assets to that region over the past year to try to prevent a regional war. Iran is weakened, but the U.S. still considers it the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, and it has drastically reduced the time it would take to develop a nuclear weapon. It is down now to one or two weeks' time. Governor Walls, if you were the final voice in the Situation Room, would you support or oppose a preemptive strike by Israel on Iran? You have two minutes. Well, thank you, and thank you for those joining at home tonight. Uh, let's keep in mind where this started. October 7th, Hamas terrorists uh, massacred over 1,400 Israelis and took prisoners. Uh, Iran, or I, uh, Israel's ability to be able to <laughs> I believe he was referring to the country, Iran, as she said, just Iran, Iraq. <laughs> Defend itself is absolutely fundamental. Getting its uh, hostages back, fundamental, and ending the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. But the expansion of Israel and its proxies is an absolute <clears throat> fundamental uh, necessity for the United States to have the steady leadership there. You saw it experienced today, where along with our uh, Israeli partners and our coalition, able to stop the incoming uh, attack. But what's fundamental here is <clears throat> that steady leadership is going to matter. It's clear, and the world saw it on that debate stage a few weeks ago, 
a nearly 80-year-old Donald Trump talking about crowd sizes is not what we need in this moment. Now, if I recall correctly, it was actually Vice President Harris who masterfully baited President Trump in the last debate by just bringing out <laughs> uh, an observation of the crowd size at his rallies. It was VP Harris who first <laughs> went on a tangent. I forgot what question it was, but whatever they asked, she was the one who said, and by the way, you know, this this president over here always exaggerates like how <laughs> big his crowds are, blah, blah, blah. And then Trump spent his two minutes rebuttal addressing that. He got hooked and just went there. So automatically when, you know, Walt's here is saying this, I don't think we should have an 80-year-old man. To be fair, I don't think we should have, you know, a, how old is she, 50, 60, 50 something, you know, like somebody who's 20 or their senior intentionally fishing to put this, this opponent as they see each other in this specific limelight that Tim Waltz here is seemingly bringing up in a negative I don't know, maybe negative it's just it's already right here I'm going to call shenanigans and just say look <laughs> again to be fair it was Kamala who didn't answer her question and went to that to do that. So, you know, I'll have to make a note here to double check that. But, I, you know, that's that's what I remember. But it's not just that. It's those that were closest to Donald Trump that understand how dangerous he is when the world is this dangerous. His chief of staff, John Kelly, said that he was the most flawed human being he'd ever met. <laughs> so we're just going to you know, bring in a whole list of names that throw, you know, President Trump under the bus. So here is the left, you know, throwing the first blow. You know, here's, here's the hook. You know, this is the bait. Let's see if, you know, Vance is smart enough not, not to get hooked by this. I mean, and I don't both know of his secretaries of defense and his national security advisors said he should be nowhere near the White House. Now, the person closest to them, the, to the Donald Trump, said he's unfit for the highest office. That was Senator Vance. What we've seen out of Vice President Harris is we've seen steady leadership. We've seen a calmness that is able to be able to draw on the coalitions to bring them together. Un <laughs> a calmness, I mean, comparatively, but this whole thing that I hear, you know, VP Harris and, you know, this Waltz campaign just really, you know, riding <laughs> like the coattails is, you know, we're going to move forward. We're not going back. We're going to, you know, bring <laughs> the people together by what? just throwing their admired leader under the bus like this? Like, come on. Understanding like, that our allies matter. When our allies see Donald Trump turn towards Vladimir Putin, turn towards uh, North Korea, when we start to see that type of fickleness around holding the coalitions together, we will stay committed. And as the vice president said today is, we will protect our forces and our allied forces, and there will be consequences.
Governor, your time is up. Senator Vance, the same question. Would you support or oppose a preemptive strike by Israel on Iran? You have two minutes. So, Margaret, I want to answer the question. First of all, thanks, Governor. Thanks to CBS for hosting the debate. You have two minutes, two minutes, right? And here's a very important question. And what do they do? They, <laughs> pardon the pun, they waltz around. <laughs> and thanks most importantly to the American people who are watching this evening and caring enough about this country to pay attention to this vice presidential debate. I want to answer the question, but I want to actually give an introduction to myself a little bit because I recognize a lot of Americans don't know who either one of I want to answer the question. I have two minutes. I want to answer the question. But first, I want to give an introduction of a... It's just... Who... who <laughs> are you fooling, man? Are. I, I was raised in a working-class family. My mother required food assistance for periods of her life. My grandmother required Social Security help to raise me. And she raised me in part because my own mother struggled with addiction for a big chunk of my... So this is very uh, eerily similar to... You know, VP Harris's <laughs> introduction. I was raised by a single mother who, you know, <laughs> I worked at a McDonald's. It's just what it's just like they got the recipe and now it's the right who are going to what? Try to concoct like the same dish that, you know, President Trump was served by <laughs> the the left during the last debate, I mean, my early life. I went to college on the GI Bill after I enlisted in the Marine Corps and served in Iraq. And so I stand here asking to be your vice president with extraordinary gratitude for this country, for the American dream that made it possible for me to live my dreams. And most importantly, I know that a lot of you are worried about the chaos in the world and the feeling that the American dream is unattainable. I want to try to convince you tonight over the next 90 minutes that if we get better leadership in the White House, if we get Donald Trump back in the White House, the American dream is going to be attainable once again. Now, to <laughs> and here's just the the general downfall of Trump and Vance. It's just <laughs> they're just completely stomping all over our current leader. Granted, they may believe still that they didn't lose the election, which <laughs> when Trump was asked that, like, do you, will you admit that you lost the election? He couldn't even do that. You know, like, it's just four years later, these guys have the same vendetta, or at least this one guy has the same vendetta and is like a snowball rolling down, just picking up everybody. I mean, here's Vance, who, according to Waltz, was somebody who came out and said Trump should not be anywhere near the White House. I don't know if that's been fat check, but then Vance, obviously they've covered this. Like what caused, what, what like in, <laughs> influenced you to just turn around? You were one of his biggest like Republican, like opposers. And now you're his VP? Like, how did that and happen? So this particular you know, like question, we have to remember that as much as Governor Waltz just accused Donald Trump of being an agent of chaos, Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. Deterrence. Until he was no longer the leader, right? Like, when he was just no longer the leader, he stopped acting like the leader that he was aspiring to be right so it's just like if you had the job and you do it well but then you know you get a temporary leave of absence or you get laid off right and you want to get that job back do you act like a completely different like candidate you know like where you're Rhetoric just completely is honed in on just attacks on Biden, Biden's age, Biden's cognitive test. You know, like, <laughs> I, 
I, I aced my cognitive exams. You know, like they, they told me that, you know, I, they've never seen anybody who's done as well. You know, it's just like you see the narcissism. You hear that narcissism come out when he's not the person that the world is revolving around. So it's just like Donald Trump got the taste of, <laughs> you know, he's already rich and famous. So it's just like this is like that like next drug that he needed. Because all the other highs that he was getting from just being, you know, like, the billionaire he was. You know, it's just like, thrills run out. You have to start seeking new avenues to get that high, that dopamine rush, right? Diddy, <laughs> you know, like, it's all unraveling now. And Trump unraveled too. And he was wise enough to know that, hey, if I'm going to run for president... I'm going to need to cover this up. And he did that with the Stormy Daniels and that all came out. You know, and he's just like, I don't understand. Like, why, why is this a crime? Like, that's, that's troubling. That's where it's just troubling. It's like, you don't, you don't understand that. And you're talking about how Biden doesn't seem to get it. It's just like, step out of yourself, President Trump, and listen to yourself speak about yourself and everybody else. You know, like... This is the current problem, not only in America, but in the world. It's just, we all, conscious human beings, whether we're sentient or not, are each battling at our own level, our ego, super ego, and id. We are trying to find... The the God, if you think of like the Trinity diagram where it's like the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. The ego is you, the superego is you, and the it is you. Now, which one is, you know, like you could be all three, but you can't be one or the other. And this is what's going on. It probably doesn't make sense, but this is the whole premise that my channel Chit Chalk Chat is really focusing on studying and like observing is the conscious speech that we all use and I say all very fittingly here because here on TikTok what do we hear people doing just speaking their mind right yeah we have our first amendment we can do the freedom of speech you know like in this is social media like we should be able to speak our mind but it's just like you know, there's certain things that, yeah, you can say, but, you know, it's common knowledge that you shouldn't say that, right? You shouldn't say the N-word <laughs> if you're not black especially, you know? You shouldn't yell fire, you know, in a building. You Like, there are these things. You Can you do it? Yeah, you can do it. But if you do it, everybody's going to look at you and be like, why? Who are you? Like, are you a little slow? Like, did you not know that that's just not acceptable, like, by our society's standards? Like, or have we just, since Trump, just thrown all that in the trash and now we're going to all use Trump's candor and his demeanor, his whole essence as like the Big Bang and just watch how everybody else just adapts or changes or shifts based on this one event, just this one man. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just kind of, you know, <laughs> speaking my mind, but in turn trying to be mindful you know like i got a lot of stuff like oh yeah I, I would love to but i have worked so hard on just like <laughs> managing all three of those voices my id my ego and my super ego just all rustling around here you know and then what i'm speaking is the me the god that's speaking that's all three in one 
Does that make sense on the Trinity? People I were mean. afraid of stepping out of line. Iran, which launched this attack, has received over $100 billion in unfrozen assets thanks to the Kamala Harris administration. What do they use that money for? They use it to buy weapons that they're now launching against our allies and, God forbid, potentially launching against the United States as well. Donald Trump recognized that for people to, to fear the United States, you needed peace through strength. They needed to recognize that if they got out of line, the United States global leader would put stability and peace back in the world. Now, you asked about a preemptive strike, Margaret, and I want to answer the question. Look, it is up to Israel what they think they need to do to keep their country safe, and we should support our allies wherever they are when they're fighting the bad guys. I think that's the right approach to take with the Israel question. And right there, his choice of words is what continues to put us as a species in this chaotic entanglement it's just here's our ally israel so yeah if they decide that they want to do a preemptive strike we'll support it if they decide that they want to go and just rape <laughs> and pillage you know whoever is not our ally then we support it like that's because if you're not our ally then you're the bad guy and that's the problem that i personally believe that is the catalyst that pushed Putin to move into Ukraine because Biden, unlike Trump, refused any contact with President Putin. And that just like shocked me when I heard him say, I will never sit down with President Putin. You know, it's just like, Wow. You know, like, what kind of leader is this? That's when Biden, I was just like, oh, my gosh, this guy, <laughs> this is not our guy. You know, like, he's talking about Armageddon. You know, it's just like, this is where I would have to say, I do believe that if Trump was president, he would be a better negotiator. I mean, Trump is, you know, the creator of the art of the deal. So, <laughs> I mean, in that turn, he treated North Korea and Russia, not as the enemy, but like as, okay, you know, like, hey, all past predecessors who were presidents before me don't see you and me like we see each other, right? They're, you know, like, that's what I, I did admire about Donald Trump. You know, he, he acknowledged these countries, granted Russia is like a giant superpower and North Korea is like this little threat. But either way, these are two countries that prior to Donald Trump have been programmed into our American like consciousness is like communist, bad, North Korea, Russia, China, you know, but then it's just like, didn't we owe like trillions of dollars to China? You know, like it's just, I, that's the thing where Donald Trump like lost me. It's like this China virus and you know, like we gotta, you know, take down China. You know, it's just like, whoa, <laughs> you know, like let's not, let's not poke that bear. Right. But then Donald Trump, you know, is just. You know, but I'm not in office, you know, but if I'm in office, then they would be scared. But because I'm not in office and Biden and this woman are weak, right? Which automatically, <laughs> you know, like, granted, I we think that we know what he's trying to say, but the way he worded it, it's just like, <laughs> you know, put that through Grammarly and see if maybe, you know, you could come out with a better dictation Trump you know in your mind you know like this is where I look at our brains as computers right now there's classical computers and quantum computers and there are too many classical computers who just look at things like there's only two sexes two genders and you know <laughs> the binary non-binary like there's so much science religion everything is just coming together and people just <laughs> are snoozing through it, you know, but it's time to like wake up because we have, you know, a month and, you know, like four days before like the real 
like big bang, you know, like this is going to be the moment where like history is like, this is where everything like turned around or just plummeted. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Governor Walls, do you care to respond to any of the allegations? Well, look, Donald Trump was in office. We'll sometimes hear a revisionist history, but when Donald Trump was in office, it was Donald Trump who we had a coalition of nations that had boxed Iran's nuclear program in, the inability to advance it. Donald Trump pulled that program and put nothing else in its place. So Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon than they were before because of Donald Trump's fickle leadership. And when Iran shot... <coughs> what? So Donald Trump pulled their nuclear program, but somehow they still have nuclear weapons? Nuc like, is that what nuclear you said? program in, the inability to advance it. Donald Trump pulled that program and put nothing else in its place. So Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon than they were before because of Donald Trump's fickle leadership. And when Iran shot down an American aircraft in international airspace, Donald Trump tweeted, because that's the standard diplomacy of Donald Trump. And when Iranian missiles did fall near U.S. troops and they received traumatic brain injuries, Donald Trump wrote it off as headaches. Look, our allies understand that Donald Trump is fickle. He will go to whoever has the most flattery or where it makes sense to him. Steady leadership like you witnessed today, like you witnessed in April. Both Iranian attacks were repelled. Our coalition is strong, and we need the steady leadership that Kamala Harris is providing. Senator Vance, uh, the U.S. did have a... Now, here's where... <laughs> is Tim Waltz implying that it's you know vp harris who's running everything right now like this is where <laughs> this whole harris waltz campaign has to really tread softly or be very clear on what they're talking about because this is what is igniting you know the right it's just like what the heck just happened so who's our president who's leading the country biden is still president but now waltz here is saying like it's VP Harris is, you know, like to her credit that <laughs> the situation is the way that it is. It's just like, I'm not believing I want to deal one with second. Iran to temporarily pause parts of its nuclear program. And President Trump did exit that deal. He recently off as headaches. Look, our allies understand that Donald Trump is fickle. He will go to whoever has the most flattery or where it makes sense to him. Steady leadership like you witnessed today, like you witnessed in April. Both Iranian attacks were repelled. Our coalition is strong, and we need the steady leadership that Kamala Harris is providing. Senator Vance, uh, the U.S. did have a diplomatic deal with Iran to temporarily pause parts of its nuclear program, and President Trump did exit that deal. He recently said... Just five days ago, the U.S. must now make a diplomatic deal with Iran because the consequences are impossible. Did he make a mistake? You have one minute. Well, first of all, Margaret, diplomacy is not a dirty word, but I think that's something that Governor Waltz just said is quite extraordinary. You yourself just said Iran is as close to a nuclear weapon today as they have ever been. And Governor Waltz, you blame Donald Trump. Who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Donald Trump consistently made the world more smart. The U.S. must now. The coalition is strong, and we need the steady leadership that Kamala Harris is providing. Senator Vance, uh, the U.S. did have a diplomatic deal with Iran to temporarily pause parts of its nuclear program, and President Trump did exit that deal. He recently said, just five days ago, the U.S. must now make a diplomatic deal with Iran because the consequences are impossible. Did he make a mistake? You have one minute. Well, first of all, Margaret, diplomacy is not a dirty word, but I think that's something that Governor Waltz just said is quite extraordinary. You yourself just said Iran is as close to a nuclear weapon today as they have ever been. And Governor Waltz, you blame Donald Trump. Who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not my. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So now it's my understanding that the facts have been checked, and it's just, hey, under President Trump's term, he did pull that deal where we were, I'm assuming under Obama's administration, restricting and, you know, like limiting 
their nuclear weapons <laughs> development program. And then here comes Trump just like, no, we'll let them do what they want to do. And then he's not president anymore. And so then, you know, the next regime has to come in and like, uh, so like what, what happened? You know, like we got to put that back, you know, like it's just now Trump when he's not, he's like, no, we should do that. But, you know, they're Biden, Harris, they're not doing it. You know, I would do that. You know, but it was him who, like, turned it around. Just like Roe versus Wade. It's just like, I wanted to put the power back in the states. You know, it's up to the states. It's like, look, before you even did that, it was already up to the states to vote on what they feel are... you know, reasonable restrictions on when, you know, women can go get this procedure, right? I'm using very specific language. So please just like follow me on that. You know, so when I hear Trump just like, now it's up to the states, you know, so the states can vote on what they feel they want to do with abortion. Only difference is there's a possibility that a state can vote like, yeah, we all voted that we just want to ban it. You know, granted, when it was overturned, everything went back to trigger laws, which, you know, like, if you follow that, it's just like crazy. Like Mississippi, Missouri, you know, like if you even have a, if you conceive a child in the state lines and you go outside and have an abortion, you could get arrested. It's just like, that's how ridiculous it was like 40, 50 years ago. And then even think about even longer than that, like prohibition when America, and it was the Christian like women's tempest movement who initiated this bill. Like we need to just, Ban alcohol completely. Hard drinks. You know, like, I don't know if you guys know this, but the term soft drink comes from prohibition because hard drinks were banned. So now what do you go get? You get a soft drink. You know, like, <laughs> you know, the food that built America. Great show. You know, but it's like, and what happened? This thing, this Christian specifically driven push to do this thing, which is like, yeah, you know, like, get people to stop drinking, but you can't, like Americans, you know, like, yo, this, this is a free country. If I want to drink, I should be able to drink. So, you know, you, somebody got to fill that need and somebody did. The organized crime bosses, Al Capone, you know, John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy's like father, you know, like these bootleggers who struck while that iron was hot and became filthy rich, Right. And granted, you know, like, probably out of all that list, like, the like Kennedy was the only one who actually seemed to, like, turn his, mis you know, he was like the Snoop Dogg and, you know, like, the rapper of his day. Where it's just like, you know, like, the rappers, you know, we know who are, like, <laughs> old, like, the classic rappers, like, Snoop Dogg and Ice-T, you know, like, these are guys who had to come up the hard way, the the illegal, you know, like, <laughs> path, like completely illegal, selling drugs, while these, like, white collar, and I'm not saying, like, white race, but white collar versus blue collar versus just, you know, like, straight thuggery, <laughs> right? I guess this, these are the three classes, but white collar crimes, in my opinion, white collar criminals are just as much, if not more, guilty as just these drug dealers who just strike while the iron's hot and the iron here is the iron of corruption, right? It's just, man, I can make a ton of money if I just like screw over, <laughs> screw over just like this one group of people, whether it be like the African-Americans or the Christians, or the non-Christians, the alcoholics. You know, it's just like, it's the same template, just with different ingredients, like constantly. That's 
how the best way I can put it. Donald Trump consistently made the world more secure. Now we talk about what the, 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 the until he was no longer in office. Then he was the one who perpetuated this fear mongering like the border crisis is getting out of control. Fentanyl is coming in because I'm not president anymore. And now nobody respects America. America is no longer great. We're going to be horrible. We're a third world country. You know, it's just like, you know, like, I don't understand how, like, the diehard Trump supporters can hear that and, like, feel good. To be an American, you know, it's just like, I, I just, it's, it's dumbfounding. You know, it's, I've never been good with words, but this is the reason I'm in this conundrum. You know? Sequence of events that led us to where we are right now, and you can't ignore October the 7th, which I appreciate Governor Waltz bringing up. But when did Iran and Hamas and their proxies attack Israel? It was during the administration of Kamala Harris. So Governor Waltz can criticize Donald Trump's tweets, but effective, smart diplomacy and peace through strength is how you bring stability back to a very broken world. Donald Trump has already done it once before. Ask yourself at home, when when was the last time, I'm 40 years old, when was the last time that an American president didn't have a major conflict breakout? The only answer is during the four years that Donald Trump was president. Gentlemen, we have a lot to get to. Nora? Margaret, thank you. Let's turn now to Hurricane Helene. The storm could become one of the deadliest on record. More than 160 people are dead and hundreds more are missing. Scientists say climate change makes these hurricanes larger, stronger, and more deadly because of the historic rainfall. Senator Vance, according to CBS News polling, seven in 10 Americans and more than 60% of Republicans under the age of 45 favor the U.S. Where we are right now, Iran is as close to a nuclear weapon today as they have ever been. And Governor Waltz, you blame Donald Trump. Who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Donald Trump consistently made the world. So here, here's this is it's just like you could, Donald Trump was pointing his finger specifically at Biden, and now it's just like now that Biden's no longer in the race, it just you know it it it's lost its <laughs> it's oomph, you know to say like it's it's under Vice President Harris's like leadership. It's just like you know like. <laughs> it's it's a it's a fickle and more secure. I guess. Now we talk about what the, the the sequence of events that led us to where we are right now, and you can't ignore October the seventh, which I appreciate Governor Waltz bringing up. But when did Iran and Hamas and their proxies attack? attack it? Nor can we ignore January sixth, right? But. <laughs> Israel, it was during the administration of Kamala Harris. So Governor Waltz can criticize. No, it was during the administration of President Biden. Donald Trump's tweets, but effective, smart diplomacy and peace through strength is how you bring stability back to a very broken world. Donald Trump has already done it once before. Ask yourself at home, when when was the last time, I'm 40 years old, when was the last time that an American president didn't have a major conflict breakout? The only answer is during the four years that Donald Trump was president. Gentlemen, we have a lot to get to. Nora? Margaret. When was the last time? I mean, they keep coming back to this talking point. So, during his term, you know, like, there was nothing going on. Everything was gravy, baby. You know, it's just like, uh, there was the COVID pandemic. You know, there was the whole, like, political divide, not only in, you know, our political institutions, but in our society, you know, in state to state we witnessed this separation this parting that spawned from just one 
four letter acronym, MAGA, right? Make America Great Again, right? Which could be read in a myriad of ways, right? Make America Great Again, you know, like by or Obama just completely, you know, like ruined this country, which is something that I know personally because my father would say the same thing. Just, and I understand where they're coming from. Like Obama's big dream, like we want change. It's just like, we want universal health care. You know, like every American citizen should have health care like Canada, right? So Obama's administration made that happen. Obamacare, right? Now, granted, the way that the Democrats, you know, which was explained to me by my father, simplistically, is just, you know, Democrats' view on taxes is that, you know, it's citizens who should, you know, be taxed less. And corporations and, you know, like big businesses that should be taxed more because the ideology there is that if citizens are taxed less, they have more money in their pocket, more money in their pocket leads to, you know, more spending, you know, and more spending leads to, you know, boosting the economy, right? But then on the flip side, the Republicans stance on taxes is that no we believe that if you tax the big corporations and big businesses and you know the one percenters these billionaires like Elon Musk you know just not more not less but just the same as everybody else you know or you know you give the tax breaks to the businesses because their ideology on that point is that if you keep the money in the businesses, then the businesses have, you know, the funds to expand, you know, grow. And what happens when big businesses, Amazon, and, you know, like, <laughs> Amazon's like the big one, but, you know, like, it, it creates, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs, more jobs for people means more people are working, getting steady income. They have money to spend. Granted, they get taxed, you know, not more, but, you know, they just <laughs> pay their taxes, you know, and yeah, it's, it's just that. So when you think of it like that, it's just like neither side is wrong, right? It's just as a society, as voters, we have to think like, like, what are we willing, you know, like, it, it's all a matter of, like, this This really is a clear sign of who we are, you know, in the thing. Like, if you're on the Democratic side, you know, <laughs> it's like the Kenny Rogers song. You know, I've, I've made a living out of reading people's faces, and if you tell me, like, yep, you're a Democrat, I'm going to... you know, assume that the cards that you're holding are that of, like, the employee, right? You know, because small business owners or big business owners, they're going to vote more Republican because they're going to want more money in their pocket. So it's all a matter of what, <laughs> what class you find yourself in, right? My family, like, is now, I last I checked, is now considered part of the 1%, you know, like, which is crazy to me. And then, you know, the rest of the 99, you know, it's just like the cutoff line is like, if your net worth is like five point something million, you're considered the 1%. So like, you know, that puts the range of, you know, a net worth of, you know, $0 all the way up to like, you know, 4.999 million, you know, like is considered the 99 percenters. So even like the 4.9 million dollar people who aren't in that 1% threshold could find themselves on the Democratic side just like, yeah, no, we want you guys to be tech. You know, it's, it's just, once you see like the, the game and how it's been played and the rules of the game, and just, it's, it's a game to be played and it's been played. Donald Trump is the one 
who as a business standpoint was just like, I know your game. I'm going to play this better than you. And it was all because of Obama. Because Obama just said, um, last time I checked, it's just one of us that is the president of the United States. That was like Obama's biggest mistake. You know, like if, you know, we gave him a time machine, I would hope like, can you just go back and tell your past self just not to say that? <laughs> you know, like, because then that wouldn't have, you know, like push the button for Donald Trump to be like, screw you, Obama. I'm going to, I'm running, you know, and he did it. He proved it, you know, like, but granted, he's still a businessman and the businessman mentality, especially on the level of big business, you know, like he's not a small business owner. He says, you know, like he's probably, you know, like again, zero dollars to 4.9 million, you know, like that's whatever. But when he like crossed that threshold, he's a big Real estate investor. So, you know, this whole thing with New York. It's just like, I value my assets to this. You know, like, and I, you know, he exposed a loophole that all these businessmen, my parents know it. You know, they don't use it to the sense where, I hope they don't, like, that Donald Trump has been accused and, you know, charged of. But it's just like, my father told me, it's just like, he, he hasn't done anything that every other businessman doesn't do. You know, like, that's where my father tells me, like, why do I think he's such a bad guy when everybody who's successful does this? And that is what, like, breaks my heart. It's just like, so what you're telling me, father, is just, like, yeah, money is the root of all evil. You know, it's just like, you know, when, I, when he told me that and just, <laughs> I was just like, look, if everybody, you know, was a murderer you know like are we just you know like are we gonna just say yeah you know everybody's doing it it's fine now you know like it's just what kind of mindset is that you know and i i argue with my father about this like when we talk politics it's especially like when i'm driving he's made a rule it's like when you're driving i'm not gonna talk politics because it's just you know like i i just it's one of these things where i just am passionate about it and i'm just it to see my my creator just, just slip in the tongue, you know, and maybe he's not slipping. He's just speaking his mind like Donald Trump, you know, he's because he looks at Kamala as just like, yeah, not Kamala specifically, but the Democratic Party, the Democratic leaders, because they milk like the whole like migrant immigration thing because yeah if they get documented or undocumented you know like the more documented immigrants that they get in here then obviously it's going to be more votes for their party leaders right it's just it makes clear sense when my father told me like that's why he doesn't like the democrats you know like that's why he has to stick with trump and not biden or harris you know like it's just so when he explains it to me like that it's just like you're right dad but I'm not saying Harris or Biden is any better than Trump. They're both equally guilty. And the crappy part is that we, as Americans, in our entire, like, in my, J.D. Vance is 40 years old. I got, you know, three years on him almost. Like, it's just, I just see it like a rocking, you know, it's just, <laughs> we're just going back and forth. It gives us something to do, but it doesn't get us or the world anywhere, right? It's just, we're all competing against each other. Everybody's terrified of the idea of a one world government, right? I'm just like, why does that scare people? Especially Christians, you know, it's just like when Jesus comes back and he says, hey, look, this is the law of the, the land and the land being the entire world. Would that not be a one world government? So when I hear, you know, like diehard Christian TikTok, you know, creators like they're talking about the one world government and, you know, like all this stuff. And this is the sign of the beast. So get ready. Like, blah, blah, blah. We have to fight. Donald Trump is our savior. You know, and then the Democrats are like, oh, he's the anti. You know, it's just like <laughs> it's our words. You know, our thoughts become our words and our words become our actions and our actions become our behavior and our behavior becomes our character and our character turns into our 
destiny. Right? Like it's it's this cycle. And then it'll all recycle itself and goes backwards. Your destiny then becomes, you know, your behavior. And then your behavior triggers your actions. Your actions, you know, trigger your <laughs> your thoughts and your thought your words and your words are triggering your thoughts. Like it's just <laughs> Thank you. Let's turn now to Hurricane Helene. The storm could become one of the deadliest on record. More than 160 people are dead and hundreds more are missing. Scientists say climate change makes these hurricanes larger, stronger, and more deadly because of the historic rainfall. Senator Vance, according to CBS News polling, seven in 10 Americans and more than 60% of Republicans under the age of 45 favor the U.S. taking steps to try and reduce climate change. Senator, what responsibility would the Trump administration have to try and reduce the impact of climate change? Now, here's my prediction. It's just like, look, drill, baby, drill. We need to dig out our natural resources. You know, that's, that's all they say. We gotta, we gotta get all the oil that we have on our soil, you know, and, you know, lower these gas prices that everybody wants, you know, but in the long run, I hear parents, especially like, you know, we just wanna leave a better world for our children and our children's children. It's like, yeah, well, if you want lower gas prices and you wanna just, you know, keep pulling up all our resources that we know we have, then yeah, let's just, Let's just waste it all. Let, let's just get rid of it all as quick as we can. So then, yeah, that generation can just never know about gasoline ever. And maybe, you know, like they'll have to invent their own technology, right? It's just, let's just be selfish like that, right? And own up to it. Let's not say we want lower gas prices and a better world for our children and our children's children. That's an oxymoron in my opinion, because it's just, yeah, I mean... You know, like, we could try now while we can to, like, help the future generations, like, transition into this new, you know, like, energy source of, like, electric cars, which Elon Musk is the one who pioneered that. Like, the idea of electric cars came long ago. Al Gore, you know, like, <laughs> exposed it. Just, like, the death of the electric car. It's because gas companies just, just said no. <laughs> That's going to eat into our pockets. No, <laughs> like, I'm not giving up a yacht. I'm not giving up that ivory bat scratcher. That's where the corruption is, right? Gas companies, gas and oil, pharmaceuticals. Like, these are the, the roots of the tree that we need to cut these limbs, rip out the roots, and just... Plant new seeds. Sure. So first of all, let's let's start with the hurricane because it's an unbelievable, unspeakable human tragedy. I, I just saw today actually a photograph of two grandparents on a roof with a six-year-old child, and it was the last photograph ever taken of them because the roof collapsed and those innocent people lost their lives. And I, I'm sure Governor Waltz joins me in saying our hearts go out to those innocent people, our prayers go out to them, and we want as robust and aggressive as a federal response as we can get to save as many lives as possible. So, I mean, I haven't been paying attention to this Hurricane Helene, but if it's like any other hurricane, you know, <laughs> meteorology is uh, a science that's really advanced, you know, since, you know, I was growing up. You know, like, you could watch the news and watch the, the weather report and, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> we got uh, sunny skies and then it could just like pour rain. Like, there was just no accuracy. But now pinpoint accurate weather, you know. Yo, we have a hurricane forming here. So if you're living in this area, we see the hurricane pushing down here, you know, into the Florida, Louisiana area. So if you're in this area, we highly advise you to prepare for, you know, <laughs> hurricane, you know, like, like winds and storms, you know, but these people are, see, they watch this and like, nah, <laughs> you know, like, it's just, who are you? You know, so yeah, these people who, you know, like, Granted, it's like, you know, these, you know, senior citizens, like the J.D. Vance talk about, like on their roof, like on the flood. It's just like, yeah, they're old, you know, they, they don't, you know, it's like, yeah, we're going to go down with the shit. But to have like a, a little kid with them, like it's just like, 
come on, you know, like think about your grandchild. I don't know if he said the child, but it's like when there's a kid involved, you have to like, again, step out of yourself, whether you're a parent to that kid or just a strange adult to that kid, you know, like as human beings, when we reach this last stage of like adulthood, when I say adulthood, I'm talking about a state of maturity and consciousness, sentience, if you will, right? That, you know, I, I have it on my channel. It, it's like my address. It's just like, I have a vision of a world where we just are honest with each other. And in our honest, you know, conversations, we don't have to worry about, you know, like people automatically assuming like we have some kind of agenda, you know, it's just like, look, I just want to talk and you know, whatever. But now we're so deep into like this programming of this new digital matrix, you know, if we're going to talk about like th this world, you know, like this is the matrix, this digital realm of social media, like this is a controlled, created world that we all interact with and think it's just like reality, you know, like, it's like we can't distinguish the two, but it's not real. It's not the real world. And when we turn off our phones, when we're not on TikTok, it's like unplugging from it and being like, whoa, dude, you know, like if you can't grasp that idea, but you grasp the fact that Jesus came down to this earth and died on the cross for our sins and raised, you know, it's just like, who are you? You're not fooling anybody who is an adult, who is wise, who is, <laughs> you know, a true child of God. And this is going to upset a lot of you, but I got to say it now because I just let it, I've just constantly watched it just, you know, and granted, I will take accountability. Like I could have said something before, but it's just like, I'm that, I'm that kind of person where it's just like, I, I, I say it, I have it, but then I'm just like, I shouldn't post that. You know, it's like tweeting. I don't tweet, but when I see Donald Trump just tweeting, like what he tweeted, he's got a book now of Donald Trump's like tweets, you know, like, I'm just like, this is the, the. This is like the war, the culture war that Trump is the one like <laughs> who is responsible for starting, right? So when I hear Vance or any other Trump, you know, supporter or teammate say like, "Hey, yeah. I mean, you can't refute that there were no wars under his presidency and, you know, under Biden, like, we got Israel, we got, you know, like, uh, Ukraine. It's just like, yeah, that's a very, um, that, that's a hard pill to swallow when you're Biden, right? But, again, you know, I'm not trying to side with the Democrats. I'm trying to be fair. It's just like, you know, like, Trump got lucky, right? Granted, maybe his luck was some, like, self, you know, manifested, you know, like, luck. He, he played the tough, you know, like, Putin, if you do this, I'm going to drop a nuke on you. You know, like, <laughs> the fact that country leaders look at Trump just like, yeah, I guess we do find him, like, a threat because he's just off the wall. You know, like, he's totally... Like, the type of person that, you know, all these, like, you know, communist leaders, I imagine just being like, yep, he's going to be, like, the one who's just like, I'm pushing the button. <laughs> you know, just like how we Americans fear it's going to be North Korea, you know, Kim Jong-il. It's going to be him who's going to, like, push a button and nuke all of us. It's like, yeah, Trump is our Kim Jong-il, you know, like, and if you can't accept that or, you know, grasp that. Again, <laughs> who are you?
fully. And then, of course, afterwards to help the people in those communities rebuild. I mean, these are communities that I love. Some of them I know very personally in Appalachia, all across the southeast. They need their government to do their job. So this is where, like, I feel like, you know, if I'm president and there was like this hurricane, I would just issue a, <laughs> you know, like evacuation. Just like, look, I don't want to risk the chance of losing innocent lives. So whatever I have to do, I'll send the National Guards to pick you guys up, you know, take you to a safe place. And then hopefully your place after the hurricane or whatever disaster we're avoiding having you get stuck in is, you know, not going to be a devastating thing where your entire life is destroyed, you know, meaning like your house and all your possessions. But hey, all that stuff can be replaced or, you know, like rebuilt. But once you just stay in the house and that you go down with that house, that's it. And maybe, yeah, you know, like at this point, if we're going to be cynical, then it's just like, hey, that's like the route of abortion. It's just like they chose abortion. They chose to just, yeah, abort themselves from <laughs> this life, this responsibility. You know, like they could have chose to say, nah, we should go. You know, like we shouldn't do this. Like we're going to die. <laughs> you know, like this kid's going to die. You know, like our our grandson's going to die. No, honey, like let's stay. And then they find us uh, it's like on the roof, just like, can you pick us up? It's just like, <laughs> I imagine just being the husband, you know, it's like, don't tell me I told you so. You know, like, and this is just who I am. You know, I put myself in these people's shoes and I'm just, I can just get lost in that character, you know, like, and people will witness me or experience me like <laughs> live firsthand, you know, this way and just like, think it's weird. You know, like, it's just like, <laughs> like, are you like uh, bipolar or something? It's just like. You know, like, I'm not diagnosed, but yeah, I have my ups and downs. You know, like, it's just, <laughs> like, I'm human, right? I don't need a doctor to tell me, like, I'm this. And then if I am this, like, that's a problem. You got to, you know, like, that's where we as a society, just like, you know, we trust, like, these doctors who are now the ones who are also, like, the most corrupt people. You know, like, it's just, <laughs> it's a big like, I told you so, like, reveal. Job. And I, I commit that when Donald Trump is president again, the government will put the citizens of this country first when they suffer from a disaster. And Nora, you asked about climate change. I think it's, this is a very important issue. Look, a, a lot of people are justifiably worried about all these crazy weather patterns. I think it's important for us, first of all, to say, Donald Trump and I support clean air, clean water. We want the environment to be cleaner and safer. But one of the things that I've noticed, some of our Democratic friends talking a lot about, is, is a concern about carbon emissions, this idea that carbon emissions drives all of the climate change. Well, let's just say that's true, just for the sake of argument, so we're not arguing about weird... About weird... <laughs> so now they're, you know, this is like almost... <laughs> a mere image of hearing like Ken Ham from, you know, Answers in Genesis saying like, you know, like archaeology, you know, tries to say like this, like yeah, these dinosaurs, you know, like disproved the Bible. It's just like, but actually, you know, it's just like, <laughs> here's the science you're looking at. And you're just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I don't choose to believe it. I'm going to believe in this other thing. Right. But here's here's a new setup. You know, we both, he, he said it himself, Trump and I both support clean air and, you know, clean water emissions. But this idea that carbon emissions, we know, like, we get emissions tests for a reason, right? And, you know, like, if science is saying, yeah, you know, a lot of the emissions from, you know, our cars and our factories have put a lot of CO2 in the air. And it's like, that's science. So for me to hear J.D. Vance like, let's just say this is true. You know, like, it's just like, who are you? <laughs> I mean, to me, you just made yourself sound 
less than, you know, like it's science. Let's just say that's true. Well, if you believe that, what would you what would you want to do? The answer is that you'd want to reshore as much American manufacturing as possible, and you'd want to produce as much energy as possible in the United States of America because we're the cleanest economy in the entire world. Now, what is he talking about? We got to drill. We got to frack. It's like, no, like you're missing the point. Like we got to push. I mean, granted, the Biden administration, like they put a you know, mandate on like car industries just saying, look, this percentage of your inventory coming out like has to be electric. We're going to force you to go that route. Elon Musk, you know, he doesn't have a patent on his you know, lithium battery. So let's use this as a platform to like really die forward with this. And so like, yeah, Trump, who, who are the ones in our political seats who are upset? Lauren Boebert, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene. These are people who are tied with the gas industry, right? So when we go to electric cars, we're not going to use the gas. And when we don't use the gas, they lose money, right? And in California, gas prices are high because the California government made a lot of taxes off of gas sales. But now that people aren't buying the gas, they're buying these electric cars and doing that, they got to recover that tax. So what do they do? According to my dad, they hike up the price per gallon so that, yeah, the, the more expensive the gallon, the more tax is going to be so we can recoup that way. That's where the the leadership in California, Gavin Newsom, Harris being, you know, from there. These are all red flags to me where it's just like already no. And the fact that, you know, I've heard it, J.D. Vance, other Republicans just say, look, if Vice President Harris is so confident about her plan, she should start executing some of these proposals that she's like <laughs> spoon feeding us i have a vision for the future right and donald trump has a vision to take us back to the past right but it's like look lady i don't mean to quote kung fu panda but you know this is the present this is the gift and you were squandering it right so it's just like yeah i understand and i have little faith that kamala harris is going to be a better leader than Biden was. And I don't look at it. I don't think she's going to be a better leader than Trump will. So it's just like at this point, you know, like I look at myself and maybe even yourself as just like, I, we could be a better president than both of them. You know, like granted, we might not have the experience or the, the wealth and, you know, backing that these people have, which is another state of corruption that I, I witnessed firsthand actually getting involved in this president. You know, like I'm a registered candidate. I can write my name, vote for myself. I can ask you to write your name. Kyle Rittenhouse says, you know, I'm not going to vote Trump or Harris. I'm going to write in, you know, uh, Rand Paul. And I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, well, yeah, I mean, hey, I'm just glad that he just like said, you, you know, like, and everybody was just like, why not? Anybody who writes in a name of a candidate is just like worse than anybody who votes for, you know, Paris or Trump. It's just like, you guys are just wasting, you know, like, it's amazing how quickly, you know, sides can turn just at a, a, a whim. It's just the political game is so fickle in the, the immortal words of you what know, have Waltz. Kamala Harris's policies actually led to more energy production in China, more manufacturing overseas, more doing business in some of the dirtiest parts of the entire world. And when I say that, I mean the amount of carbon emissions they're doing per unit of economic output. So if we actually care about getting cleaner air and cleaner water, the best thing to do is to double down and invest in American workers and the American people. And unfortunately, Kamala Harris has done exactly the opposite. Governor Walls, you have two minutes to respond. Well, we got close to an agreement because all those things are happening. Look, first of all, it is a horrific tragedy uh, with this hurricane. And, and my heart goes out to the folks that are down there uh, in contact with the governors. I serve as 
co-chair of the Council of Governors. It's, we work together on these emergency managements. Governors know no partisanship. They work together to solve the governors and the emergency responders are on the ground. Those happen on the front end. The federal government comes in, makes sure they're there to that we recover, but we're still in that phase where we need to make sure that they're staying there, staying focused. Now, look, coming back to the climate change issue, there's no doubt this thing roared onto the scene faster and stronger than anything we've seen. Senator Van But, I mean, it couldn't have been out of nowhere, right? With all the technology, all the science that we have at our fingertips, I, I refuse to believe that this was just something that just like we, we were totally unprepared. We didn't see it coming. You know, we had to have some foresight that, hey, you know, it's coming. This one's coming quick, quicker than the other ones. It's big, you know, but they make it sound like, yeah, you know, like this. <laughs> Ants had said that there's a climate problem in the past. Donald Trump called it a hoax and then joke that these things would make more beachfront property to be able to invest in. What we've seen out of the Harris uh, administration. I mean, that joke, if it was a joke, that would be true. I mean, maybe that is Trump's angle, being a property investor. Hey, new, uh, you know, like, there's never going to be more land. But, you know, hey, half of America goes underwater like Atlantis or all of these other civilizations that we're finding like underwater. You know, it's like, yeah, it's going to be beachfront property. Colorado, where I live, could one day become like an island, right? I mean, we're the highest elevation, so I, I feel pretty comfortable that, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, flooding <laughs> or hurricanes, you know, tornadoes, maybe like <laughs> for forest fires, you know, like, but you live in, you know, California or Florida, you know, like it's just, you, you know what you're going to get yourself into. So now the Biden Harris administration is we've seen this investment. We've seen massive investments, the biggest in global history that we've seen in the Inflation Reduction Act has created jobs all across the country. 2000 in Jeffersonville, Ohio, taking the EV technology that we invented and making it here. 200,000 jobs across the country. The largest history that we've seen in the Inflation Reduction Act has created jobs all across the country. 2000 in Jeffersonville, Ohio, taking the EV technology that we invented. That we invented? That we invented? Like, I don't understand who... Waltz is referring to like we, like we the Democrats, we the American, you know, people, or should the credit really go to like Elon Musk and his, you know, pioneering, you know, contribution, like I said, to just not patent his lithium battery technology. He said, look, I would rather like let this be a gift to the world so that the, excuse me, the world can use it to save itself, right? Elon Musk is, you know, like I, I've, I've done character profiles on Elon Musk and he was somebody who really feared just the direction our species was heading, like the light of our, our, our species, you know, like he, those were like his exact words. Like he fears that the light of humanity is going to be like extinguished. You know, if, if he and other people who can do something, don't do something because, you know, of profits you know, stockholders, you know, making your stockholders happy. You and know, making like it just... 200,000 jobs across the country. The largest solar manufacturing plant in North America sets in Minnesota. But my... But my farm... So this is where you're like, yeah, I would agree. You invent these new technologies, then you create like these new jobs.